Welcome to worship in this season of Pentecost, this summer, season after Pentecost. This summer, we are exploring Old Testament stories that help us know more of who God is and who we are as God's people. And today, we hear the story of how God calls Abram and Sarai and all of us into a future with hope in which we are blessed to be a blessing to the world. A special welcome to guests today and to those worshiping at home. Let's wave to those who are at home with the cameras there. Welcome to worship. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped with the service for Vern Koenig and Lowell Erdman this past week and all who came to show their love and support. I'm so grateful for how Good Shepherd handles, works with families and shows up for funerals. It's really a blessing. Yesterday, many of us were part of the Northeastern Iowa Synod Assembly. Thank you to Chris Peterson, who attended as our voting member, and to Good Shepherd members, Pastor Susan Friedrich and Pastor Melissa Bills, who were on the planning team for the assembly. Pastor Susan also serves as secretary of the Synod. Thank you for your service. And prayers are requested today for members of our synod who will travel to our companion synod in Hungary. Um, tomorrow they leave, and Susan and Norman Friedrich are part of that trip, so we'll include prayers for them in the trip today. And we rise now in body and or spirit for confession, printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our opening hymn is 858 in the Red Book.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue on page two in the blue book, and if you are new to this beautiful liturgy, um, behold, I make all things new, just know that it is so much easier to sing than it looks, and um, it's such a beautiful liturgy, and the congregation will carry you, so just listen and join in song. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Oh God, you love this whole world and work through your chosen people to bless all creation. Empower us to be a blessing so that all may know your life and your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In today's first reading, God's call of Abram and Sarai has a clear purpose, that, though, that through them all families of the earth would gain a blessing. As they set out on their journey, they are accompanied by promises of land, nation, and a great reputation. As they journey, they inaugurate sacrificial worship at every stopping point. A reading from Genesis chapter 1. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. And then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar for the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. And with Bethel on the west and I on the east, there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward Negeb. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. I have something for you, and I think I have enough. If not, I have lots of... You, <laughs> you want to come up, guys? <laughs> come on up. So, okay, there's been a contest, and you've all had to work really, really hard, right? Uh, no, you haven't done anything. You haven't earned this, and you get, you get a lifesaver. Everyone gets lifesavers. They're you, lifesaver, and you, except that you... You get, oh, and you're going to get two chocolates. <laughs> and then you're going to ask your brother. Because you all get these blessing that you didn't earn. You did nothing. You came where God tells us, go, go to church. So you did that, right? And, but nothing else, and you get this blessing. Yes, Holly. And say, say what? So you can learn more about Jesus and God. Exactly. And God, God says to Abram and Sarai, I will bless you. I will give you this. And they've done nothing. But then they are to be a blessing to other people. So you got this blessing, this candy, and you get to share that blessing, especially Theo with Owen. And I have one more that I will find for you afterwards. It's just, <laughs> I, 
you, yours is coming. But um, you, <laughs> there, there's, there were a few more hidden away, so we'll get, but you get to share so that you get to have some of this, but you also get to share this. And that's what happens for Abram and Sarai. They get this blessing, and then they're supposed to bless other people with it. So you have this wonderful blessing of lifesavers, and then you get to bless other people like the people around you who are sitting there. You can share with them, especially right now. You can share it with you, okay? So, <laughs> um, so that's what's happening in the story and what we will be thinking about in the sermon. So let's pray. Let's repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for blessing us. Help us to bless others. Amen. You can Amen. You can go to your seats and we'll share in the psalm and we'll remain seated. Summer, we're hearing from the Old Testament and a gospel reading, except this Sunday, the um, assigned second reading just goes so perfectly with our Old Testament reading that we had to hear that as our New Testament reading today. So um, it, our New Testament reading is from Romans, the fourth chapter. And Paul presents Abraham as a living model of right relationships. For Abraham and for us, a right relationship with God involves trusting that God's promises will be fulfilled because God makes the dead alive and calls into existence what other does, otherwise does not exist. A reading from Romans chapter 4. For this reason, it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all Abram's descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. 
Hoping against hope, Abram believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what God had promised. Therefore, Abraham's faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words that was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Beloved people of God, grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's funny the things that stick with you from childhood. I don't have a great long-term memory, but for some reason, the chorus of this song that I learned in Sunday school has stuck with me. And like Holly said, in Sunday school, you come to learn about God and Jesus, but this song uh, doesn't mention God a whole lot. Uh, The chorus goes, I am a promise, I am a possibility, I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. (laughs) Okay, I must really trust you if I just sing that song. But um, I won't, I'll spare you singing the whole, the whole thing. But um, I loved that song when I was a kid, even though I didn't really know what potentiality meant at the time. But it's so catchy, you know. Except it came to mind this week, I think, because it just stands in such sharp contrast to the story of Sarai and Abram, who become Sarah and Abraham. Um, God chooses Sarai and Abraham to become the family through which God will bless the whole world. And when God chooses Abram and Sarai for this, they aren't great candidates for the job. They certainly are not great big bundles of potentiality. They're getting on in years, and in those long years, they haven't been able to have children. They haven't done anything flashy to win God's favor. They certainly don't have the energy of Sunday school children belting out songs or the hopefulness of recent graduates heading into a bright future. Sarai and Abraham are just two names in a long list of names right before this story. One of those, so-and-so was the father of so-and-so, was the father of so-and-so. And the only thing noteworthy about Sarai and Abram is that they can't have children. And as they look into the future, they probably feel pretty bleak without children who will keep them in this long line of lists of people, children who will keep their memory alive as they near the end of their life. Then, out of the blue, God comes to Abram and says, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. God makes them a promise. God doesn't say, you have a lot of potential, so I will bless you. Or, I'm pleased with you, so I will bless you. Or, you better clean up your act, and then I will bless you. God says, Go, I will bless you. The promise isn't because of who they are. It is because of who God is and what God does. God makes promises. God chooses unlikely people, people without a lot of promise, 
or potential. God does something new when all looks bleak and barren and hopeless. The promise depends upon God, not upon Abram and Sarai. That I am a promise song and so much of American Christianity puts the emphasis not on God, but on us. It emphasizes the ego's favorite words, I and me, rather than God. In 12 lines of the song, every single line of that song starts with I am, I can, and the I and me show up 15 times in 12 lines, and God shows up four times. This, to me, is just a snapshot of how American Christianity is, and it's kind of an extreme version of how we spend so much of our days focused on ourselves, looking at ourselves and our promise and our potential, I, I, I. Yet a focus on human potential and promise can lead us into two ditches, one being anxiety, because we feel like all this pressure to live up to our potential and make things work, or despair, as we look around at humanity and don't see a lot of promise or reason for hope. Thanks be to God, it isn't all up to us. Life and goodness and change and possibility and hope do not depend upon us. Our hope is not in our own promise. Our hope is in the God of promise who brings life when all looks barren and bleak and hopeless. God brings new creation and order out of chaos. We heard that last week in Genesis 1 and in our psalm, and God continues to create order out of chaos. God gives life to all that is dead, Paul reminds us today. God orients us to hope when we cannot hope. God changes everything for Abram and Sarah, eventually even changing their names to Abraham and Sarah, indicating they will be the father and mother of a great nation. Their story is the stuff of legends. Yet God is always at work, sometimes in less dramatic ways, to bring new life and hope to us, to you. God is at work when life feels chaotic and you are reminded, God is God and I am not. I can rest. God is at work when you are assured in the name of Jesus your sins are forgiven and you can let go of the anxiety and shame you are carrying. God is at work when you keep on hoping and trying and working even after years of waiting, when others keep showing up for you in that time and you keep showing up for the world. Whether you are feeling flashy or bleak, despairing or full of potentiality, God is at work in, for, and through you. God is at work to forgive, love, and set you free. You can follow God into God's promised future, a future with hope. Let's take a moment for a silent prayer.
We continue with the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. With the whole church, let us confess the faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray, O oh God, for the church. Help us to trust your promises and to live as a blessing to your world. Be near to those traveling to Hungary with our Northeast Iowa Synod. Deepen our partnerships and empower our service. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for creation. Send rains to water the earth, protection to those fighting fires, help to all recovering from disasters, and relief from the smoke hovering over eastern states. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Where chaos reigns, bring order through good government that helps all people to flourish. Where things look stuck and hopeless, inspire creative solutions and new ways forward. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need, Accompany those longing for children, all whose futures feel bleak, all who are ill, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, especially the Koenig family, the Erdman family, Martha, Laura, Elizabeth, Donna, Helen, Sue, Melanie, Marv and Mickey, James, Marion, Stephanie, Ed, Harland, Glenn, Janet, and Utah. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We give thanks, O oh God, for all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the prayers of our hearts. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with those at home, waving peace. And share peace here in the sanctuary.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the booklet, the Lord be with you. indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and who was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal, 
Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son, through whom all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of Christ is given for you at home again and again. And for you in the sanctuary, here Christ's word becomes flesh and promises for you that you can taste and touch and trust. All are welcome at Christ's table. The ushers will direct you up where you can kneel to, at the altar rail, hold out your hands for gluten and dairy-free bread, and you'll be offered red wine or grape juice. There is, or white grape juice. There are individual servings or indicate if you need a blessing. There is a place for you here.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. A few sending announcements. The Krum Kaka ministry is beginning. This is a wonderful ministry of the whole congregation where we get to make Krum Kaka together and everyone can learn. I can do it. It's really <laughs> very fun. And then we sell the Krum Kaka at Nordic Fest and all the proceeds are given to ministry um, within and beyond the congregation. So it's all given away and it's a wonderful ministry of hospitality and community and um, service. So you can sign up today to start helping with that. And Wednesday night is the first of the book discussions we're having this summer. There, You can come to either one or both of the discussions of each book. So it's Wednesday night and Thursday of this week. Um, this is Ken Wheeler's book. Who He was our guest in April. So we hope some folks have had a chance to read the book. If you haven't, um, you can still come and have the book with you and gain a lot from the conversation. The books are available at Dragonfly. The other two books are even sh much, much shorter and they're coming in July and August. Uh, this Wednesday night, there's also a um, youth and family craft event from 6.30 to 8 here in Fellowship Hall. And Shepherd Orient, there's a second orientation for Shepherds. If you couldn't come last week, please go to the library about um, 10.50 for that. And we rise now for the blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now until the end of the age. Amen. Our sending song is 831. We sing verses 1 and 3. 831.
Thank you.